Okay, so tell me if this is you. You're a weekend warrior, you're escaping the nine to five, you only have some time at the weekend, maybe the odd occasion in the week to ride your bike. Um, because of that, you're probably riding locally on local natural trails, um, mixed up with the odd trip to a bike park, a trail center, that sort of thing. Then this is a bike that I reckon you should be looking at. This is the 2021 Marin Alpine Trail 7. It's my bike that I bought about nine months ago. And I've done all sorts of riding on it since then. Um, it's been fab. I absolutely love it. And uh, let's have a little look around, see what you think. So there's a little look around the bike. What do I think? Well, for anyone that can only have one bike, and by that I mean either financially you're in any position to have one bike, or because of the mixture you're riding, you want a bike which is very much like me, where you want it to do everything you'd want to do. Now, in terms of my riding, I said 90% of it is natural woodland trails, um, forestry type trails, that sort of thing, um, mixed up with a bit of trail centre riding and a rare occasion to a bike park who want to go and hit some jumps and so on. So I really needed something that could just cover all those bases. Um, so really, I mean, you're looking at the sort of trail bike, enduro bike crossover. I went for the enduro bike on paper, um, slightly longer travel. I mean, it's 160 travel, um, as you saw. It's quite big and burly. It's not the lightest bike, um, given its nature, but it's not meant to be. You know, it's meant to be there, I think Marin describe it, describe it as um, rough and rowdy riding. So, you know, it's meant for hard hitting, big jumps, big bums, um, and for that's perfect. On the 29 inch wheels, it just flies over everything. Um, the drawback of that is obviously it's not the quickest turning. If you're on tight single track and switchbacks, you do feel its size and you have to sort of muscle around corners. Um, but once you get it pointing down a hill, it, it just absolutely flies. Um, it's amazing. I love it. Um, Upgrades or changes I've made. I've changed the saddle, which I think probably everyone does to be honest. That's just personal preference. Oh, using the bike here. Um, what else have we changed? I've put some different pedals, I've gone for flat pedals, I've just changed these to the E13 set of flats, they're quite nice. Um, again, I switched over from SPDs to flats um, when I started doing more gravity riding. Um, just like that safety net, being able to dab and get your feet down. Um, and also the main thing, I guess, um, I've set up tubeless. Obviously most bikes, even high-end ones these days, they come tubed to save a bit of money. So that's the first thing I did. Got some nice muck-off anodized valves on there. Um, that makes a huge difference. I've actually got some winter tyres on at the moment as well. I've still got the stock summer tyres, the V-Flow Snap tyres. They're good. They'll be going back on soon. Um, and the main thing, I, I guess, there's been a problem as such is my front brake a few months ago, end of September, um, kind of went pop and just stopped working um, on a ride actually. So that had to be replaced. So it's got the same caliper, which is the um, sort of Dior spec four pot caliper. I changed to the M6100 lever. Um, it was a non-series M4 
or M201 lever I think on there um, and just recently I've switched the rear brake lever as well just to match it up so these are technically an upgrade but through necessity it did go pop which that was the end of September I've only had the bike since last May so not particularly good that I had to replace parts due to um, a failure after basically a few months but there we go I guess you can get that on on anything um, but I'm really happy with these they're, they're more than adequate and do the job um, everything else is fine drivetrain Dior drivetrain works pretty much flawlessly um, drop posts it's been quite slow quite sticky I've just recently in the service had the drop cable changed um, but the droppers it, it does sort of slow up and get quite sticky quite easily again it's a cheap drop post so a bit of a compromise in the build there um, but value wise you can't beat it I paid £2,540 in May 2021 um, given what the market's been doing over the last year and shortage of stock and so on anyone's guess how much bikes are going to be uh, when they're released this summer it's undoubtedly going to be more than that I suspect um, but yeah it's really good it, it does everything you know it's if you look at trail bikes it's a heavy longer travel trail bike or it's a middle of the road enduro bike with an adequate spec on it um, as soon as you start doing downhill stuff it it does it and for my level of riding it's fine there are a few trails I've done where I've thought actually a downhill bike might be a bit bit um, sort of softer and, and more cushioned ride down those trails but I'm splitting hairs it's, it's absolutely fine for the vast, vast majority of people um, so there we go I love it um, I don't think there's anything else to sort of comment I've just done the 50 hour front and rear suspension service on it um, it, it was actually a bit over it was about 65 hours on, on both so I've um, got that done thank you to RSF suspension in Plymouth they've got it feeling plush it feels like brand new again it's so silky smooth again um, definitely worth keeping on top of that but I'd recommend it for anyone who wants a big trail bike or, or sort of first enduro bike, can't go wrong. It pedals up here absolutely fine. I'd be quite happy going out for a longer uh, moorland ride on this, no issues at all. Um, but for anything downhill and trail centre wise, it's peachy. So there we go. Um, hope you, I hadn't seen one online sort of from a real world rider's point of view, so hopefully it might help. Any questions, you want to know anything more about the bike, then hit me up in the comments. I'll see you on the next one. Catch you later.